हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक इन दिस वीडियो सेशन ऑफ मेडिसिनल केमिस्ट्री सो इन द प्रीवियस पार्ट्स वी हैव डिस्कस्ड व्हाट इज ड्रग मेटाबॉलिज्म और बायो ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन वी हैव सीन व्हाई वी रिक्वायर द ड्रग मेटाबॉलिज्म और मेटाबॉलिज्म ऑफ दीज वेरियस जीनोबायोटिक्स वी हैव सीन व्हाट आर द डिफरेंट वेज बाय व्हिच द ड्रग और द जीनोबायोटिक कैन गेट मेटाबॉलाइज्ड इन द बॉडी and we have seen the different chemical reactions involved in phase 1 and phase 2 now in this particular session we will be discussing the important thing that is the factors which are affecting the drug metabolism or the bio transformation and here we should also emphasize the stereochemical aspects of the drug or the particular xenobiotic which will have the effect on the drug metabolism because we are studying the medicinal chemistry so we need to understand what are the stereochemical aspects of the drugs and how they affect the drug metabolism so let's get started so the drugs and xenobiotics we have seen they are often getting metabolized by several different phase 1 and phase 2 pathways to give their corresponding metabolites and the relative amount of any particular metabolite which is getting formed from the drug or the xenobiotic is mainly determined by the concentration of enzyme which is responsible to have the bio transformation because we have seen here you can see the drug is getting metabolized into the corresponding metabolite right and this conversion is usually done with the microsomal enzymes which are present in our body and we we know the major site or the powerhouse of these enzymes responsible for bio transformation is present in the liver so alteration in the synthesis of these microsomal enzyme in the body will lead to the different rate of drug metabolism that is very obvious right so the main important thing which affect the drug metabolism that is the amount of enzyme responsible for undergoing the bio transformation okay and the rate of drug metabolism is mainly important because the pharmacological action is depend on the drug metabolism and also if the drug is not get metabolized in a faster way what will happen the drug accumulate in the body and it will cause the severe toxicity even we have seen the macromolecules present in the body right they can also get affected by the presence of some reactive metabolites right which are not getting transformed into a hydrophilic metabolites okay so we can correlate the rate of drug metabolism with the drug efficacy so you can see here i have summarized in this diagram if the rate of drug metabolism is increased now let's say in our body if the enzymes responsible for the bio transformation of a particular drug is getting increased so the amount or concentration of those enzymes are more than the required so what will happen the rate of that particular drug metabolism will be faster and because of that the intensity of the drug or the duration of the drug action will be decreased okay what we are trying to understand here if the drug is getting metabolized faster why the drug is getting metabolized faster because the amount of enzyme responsible for bio transformation is more and because of that the drug is getting converted into a metabolite right and because of that the drug will not have sufficient time to produce its pharmacological action and because of that ultimately the drug efficacy will be reduced on the other hand if the rate of drug metabolism is decreased that means the amount of enzyme responsible for bio transformations are less in quantity so what will happen the bio transformation of the drug will be slower down and because of this the drug is getting more time in the body to exhibit its pharmacological action and because of this the intensity and the duration of drug action will in increase and this will lead to the accumulation of these drug 
into a toxic level and that will create a toxicity to a body and the drug action will also be prolonged. So, these things usually happens when the rate of drug metabolism is going to change either increase or either decrease both will have its own effect on the drug action ok. So, the first factor which we need to consider that is the age differences ok. Now, in age differences we can make out the age differences in drug metabolism are very obvious in the newborns because we know when the fetus or the baby is getting developed right. So, there are the changes happening in the body right the body is getting developed the enzymes responsible for the biotransformation are under process they are under synthesis right. So, it will require some time so that all the enzymes will be present in the body of the newborn. So, this is the main reason why there are differences in the drug metabolism in the newborns and in the adults. So, if you compare the newborn and adults, in adults the body is completely developed, all the enzymes responsible for the biotransformation are present in sufficient amount, whereas in case of newborn, there is one possibility that that particular enzymatic pathways have not been developed at all or they are under process that means their amount is not sufficient right and this will affect the rate of drug metabolism ok. For example, we can have the hexobarbital. So, this hexobarbital will uh, metabolize in newborn in a different way compared to the adult. So, we can see here. So, this was the experiment performed in vivo in the animals. So, you can see if hexobarbital is given with the dose of 10 mg per kg to the adult mouse ok. So, what is happening here? The adult mouse have sufficiently developed enzymatic pathways and because of this the hexobarbital pharmacological action that is the sleep. So, this adult mouse will sleep less than 5 minutes because the drug hexobarbital is easily getting metabolized in this particular adult mouse. Whereas, in case of newborn mouse, what is happening? The metabolite pathways are not developed because of this the hexobarbital though the same dose is given as 10 mg per kg, but the rate of drug metabolism is very slower and because of this the pharmacological action of hexobarbital is prolonged. So, you can make out here the newborn mouse is uh, having the sleep more than 6 hours whereas in case of adult mouse it was just less than 5 minutes. So, this much difference of pharmacological action with the same drug with the same dose can uh, have effect on the rate of drug metabolism. So, this is the age difference and this is mainly because of the amount of metabolizing enzyme present in the body. Another example we can have. So, in humans oxidative and conjugative capability of newborn are also less or lower as compared to those of the adults. So, you can take a very classical example here that is the chloramphenicol. Now, in chloramphenicol if you give to the adults because of the ability of adults to metabolize this chloramphenicol, it will easily metabolize and it will have pharmacological action without producing the toxicity. But if the same form uh, the chloramphenicol is given to the neonatal or infants, what will happen? the chloramphenicol undergoes the drug metabolism mainly by the glucuronidation and this glucuronidation pathways are not fully developed in the uh, neonatal or infants and because of this the chloramphenicol is not getting converted into its metabolite and hence the chloramphenicol will get accumulated in the body without undergoing metabolism and its action is also prolonged and because of this toxicity what we usually have that is the gray baby syndrome in the infants or the neonatals. So, this is very uh, serious uh, kind of pharmacological action which we observe in uh, uh, infants or neonatals because of the inability of uh, metabolism of chloramphenicol. So, this is mainly because of the age differences. Then in humans and animals generally the drug metabolism it will diminish with the old age. So, that is again obvious as the body is going to progress as you are getting older and older 
right? The capability of your body to synthesize those microsomal enzymes will also get reduced. And sometimes the body is uh, suffering from various uh, diseases like uh, the hepatitis or the cirrhosis, right? And because of this, if the liver is getting affected, obviously the enzymes which are present in the liver, those will also get affected and ultimately the drug metabolism will be different in these kinds of uh, patients as compared to the normal patients, okay. Then the next factor is the species and strain differences. So the metabolism of many drugs are also species dependent. Different animal species may biotransform some of the drugs by different metabolic pathways, okay. So, here we can take an example of amphetamine. Now, this amphetamine is undergoing the oxidative deamination. We can see the oxidative deamination has happened in the amphetamine. We have already discussed this in the uh, phase 1 and phase 2 reactions. So, amphetamine is getting converted to phenyl acetone by the deamination. This amino group has been uh, removed, right, and it has formed a phenyl acetone. And then this phenyl acetone will undergo the subsequent biotransformation and it will form more hydrophilic benzoic acid, which is a metabolite of the amphetamine through the oxidative deamination. So, this kind of pathway converting amphetamine to the phenyl acetone and then phenyl acetone to the benzoic acid. So, this pathway is, is common in man, rabbit, and guinea pigs. Whereas in case of rat, you will not observe this particular pathway, we will observe the aromatic hydroxylation of amphetamine at para position. So, we will form the para hydroxy amphetamine. So, you can see the aromatic hydroxylation is happening here at the para position and amphetamine is converted or metabolized into a para hydroxy amphetamine. So, from species to species, the pathway for a particular drug is different, okay. So, this is one of the factor. Then within the species also, sometimes we observe the difference in the rate of drug metabolism. For example, the strain differences. So, this is called as the strain differences within species. If we are observing a difference in the rate of drug metabolism, we refer it as a strain differences. So, this strain differences exist mainly in breed mice and rabbits, okay. For example, again we take an hexobarbital. So, the in vitro studies uh, have uh, directing that if the hexobarbital is given to the rabbits and the same drug hexobarbital is given to the cotton tail rabbits. So, what is happening here? The cotton tail rabbit metabolize the drug 10 times faster than that of the New Zealand rabbit. So, both are rabbit, but there is a individual differences. So, one strain of rabbit is New Zealand rabbit and other strain is cotton tail rabbit, right. So, the same drug is given to both of these strain, but one strain that is cotton tail rabbit is having the faster rate of drug metabolism, 10 times faster uh, rate of metabolism in case of this cotton tail rabbit as compared to the New Zealand rabbit. So, this is again a example of strain difference and this will affect the rate of drug metabolism. Then the third factor which is not so common, but we need to understand this that is the hereditary or the genetic factors. So, in some cases noticeable differences in the metabolism of several drugs are observed and many of these are due to the genetic or the hereditary factors. We observe these kinds of differences mainly in the drugs like acylation of isoniazid oxidation of phenytoin, phenylbutazone, dicumarol and nitrotriptyline. So, these are the drugs which will have the hereditary or genetic factors which are affecting their rate of drug metabolism. And many patients, they reported that they do not respond to the codeine and its analogs. And later it was found that this is mainly because of their inability to undergo a biotransformation of codeine into morphine by O demethylation and this O demethylation of codeine, O demethylation of codeine to morphine is because of this particular enzyme CYP to D6 enzyme is responsible for converting codeine into a morphine. And in these patients, 
this enzyme was missing this enzyme was not present and because of that the codeine was not getting converted to a morphine and because of this they were not responding to the action of codeine and its analog ok so this is an example of this hereditary or genetic factor so in some people because of these hereditary or genetic changes this particular enzyme was missing and they were not able to respond to the pharmacological action of coding ok the next factor is the sex differences so the rate of drug metabolism also varies according to the gender in some animals so in humans we have example of nicotine and aspirin so this seems to be metabolized differently in women and men so we know there are some minor differences in the metabolizing enzyme when we compare the men with the women and even in other animals also so one such example is adult male rats they metabolize several xenobiotics at much faster rate as compared to that of the female rats especially with the end demethylation of aminopyrene hexobarbital oxidation etc then gender differences can be significant in terms of drug drug interaction based on the drug metabolism we know many times the patients are taking lots of medication and there is a possibility that the true drugs can have some kind of drug drug interaction and because of this they will alter the uh, levels of the enzymes especially the females they are under undergoing the contraception right they, they are taking the some hormonal, uh, hormonal uh, treatment and because of that there will be some differences in the metabolizing enzymes. Then the next important factor is the enzyme induction. Now enzyme induction is nothing but when the synthesis of enzyme in the body is getting improvised. That means if the levels of enzymes in the body are getting increased we refer it as an enzyme induction. And this enzyme induction what, what it will do obviously because the amount of enzyme present in the body which is responsible for biotransformation is getting improvised. So it will obviously increase the rate of drug metabolism and because of this that will decrease the pharmacological action of the drug ok the drug efficacy will be reduced. So we can take an example of this enzyme induction there are various reasons by which the enzyme induction will be observed in the body one such example is the simultaneous administration of phenobarbital and warfarin so if we are administering both of these drug together what will happen they will undergo a drug drug interaction and this will cause the enzyme induction the levels of the enzyme will getting improvised and because of this the warfarin and phenobarbital they have administered together so the enzyme induction is happening and you know warfarin is given as an anticoagulant and because of the co-administration of these two drugs the warfarin will get metabolized in a faster way and because of this the desired level of pharmacological action of warfarin will not be observed. So we have to optimize the dose of warfarin if we are giving the warfarin along with the phenobarbital the dose what we are administering is not sufficient because it is rapidly getting metabolized and the desired level of pharmacological action as an anticoagulant will not be observed. So these things we need to consider as a clinical pharmacist when we are administering the multiple drugs in a particular patient. Enzyme induction will also enhance the metabolism of endogenous compounds like steroidal hormones and bilirubins and then phenobarbital can increase the metabolism of cortisol, testosterone, vitamin D and bilirubin in humans. So this is an example the drug is not only improvising the enzyme induction and because of this enzyme induction it is also increasing the rate of metabolism of endogenous substances like these cortisol, testosterone and so on. Then opposite to the enzyme induction the next factor is enzyme inhibition. So what is enzyme inhibition when the synthesis or activity of enzyme in the body is decreased its levels are decreased we refer it as a enzyme inhibition. This enzyme inhibition can happen again due to various reasons and one of the important reason is the grapefruits 
and the possible other foods. So, if you are consuming these foods, what will happen? These fruits will inhibit the drug metabolism. So, what they do? They inhibit the CYP3A4 enzyme, right? And this enzyme is responsible for biotransformation of some of the drugs. And then we see the people who are consuming these kinds of uh, fruits or possible foods, and if they are taking these medication like amiodaron, then cisaprid, and this will uh, increase the area under the curve for these particular drugs. Okay, so this is how the enzyme induc induction and enzyme inhibition will affect the rate of drug metabolism. Now, the next factor is again very important that is the stereochemical aspects of drug metabolism. So, many drugs like warfarin, propranolol, hexobarbitol, cyclophosphamide, ibuprofen, ketamine, they are often administered as their racemic mixtures. So, you know what is a racemic mixture? Now, in our course, we are also simultaneously studying the pharmaceutical organic chemistry 3, where we have discussed about the stereochemistry of the drugs. So, this is why we need to understand the stereochemistry of the drugs and we should correlate the stereochemical aspect with respect to the pharmacological action of the drug. So, we have seen what are the racemic mixtures. So, when the drug is present in the enantiomeric form, and if we take equal amount of two enantiomers, let us say the R enantiomer 50 percent, S enantiomer 50 percent in a one particular formulation, then that formulation is optically inactive, right? We refer it as a racemic mixture. And these two enantiomers will differ or may differ in their pharmacological activity. So, sometimes or usually one enantiomer is more active than the other enantiomer. For example, the S enantiomer of warfarin is 5 times more potent as anticoagulant than the its corresponding R enantiomer. Okay? So, if I have the S enantiomer, it is having a 5 times more potency as compared to its counterpart R enantiomer. In some cases, two enantiomers may totally have different pharmacological activities. For example, this Alpha uh, propoxyphane, if it is a dextrorotatory, it is referred as an analgesic, it has analgesic activity. But if you take the Leo enantiomer, that is alpha minus alpha propoxyphane, it is having a totally different pharmacological action as an antitussive. So, you can imagine the structures are same, only their arrangement is different, their stereochemistry is different. So, by changing one enantiomer to the other enantiomer from the dextro to levo, the activity is also getting different. Then individual enantiomers of racemic drug often metabolized at different rate. For example, the dextro enantiomer of the propranolol undergoes more rapid metabolism as compared to its corresponding levo enantiomer. So, dextro is getting metabolized faster in case of the propranolol. Then allylic hydroxylation of hexobarbitol occurs more rapidly with the R enantiomer. R enantiomer is getting hydroxylated very rapidly as compared to its S enantiomer in the humans. So, here we comes with the term what we refer it as a substrate stereoselectivity. So, this substrate stereoselectivity is often used to denote a preference for one of the stereoisomer as a substrate for metabolizing the enzyme or a particular pathway. Okay. So, we will take an example and we will uh, try to understand. There are individual enantiomers of racemic mixture and this will also metabolize by the different pathways. So, one such example is the glutethamide. Now, in this glutethamide, right, if this is given in dogs, right, it will undergo the metabolism by different pathways. Now, this glutethamide is undergoing the aromatic hydroxylation. You can see the dextro enantiomer of this glutethamide is undergoing the aromatic hydroxylation. So, you can see the hydroxyl group has introduced here. We have discussed these reactions in uh, phase 1 
and it is forming the 4 hydroxyglutithiamide. Whereas the LEO enantiomer is not going aromatic hydroxylation, it is undergoing the hydroxylation at this particular carbon. So, this also we have discussed the omega oxidation and omega 1 oxidation. So, can you make out this is what kind of oxidation? Oxidation is happening at the penultimate carbon. So, here this is the carbon next to the terminal carbon methyl. So, this oxidation is not happening at the terminal methyl carbon, this is happening to the next to the terminal carbon which we refer it as a penultimate carbon. So, this is an example of omega 1 hydroxylation at carbon 2. So, you can make out in leo enantiomer of the glutathiamide in dogs, it is undergoing omega 1 hydroxylation at carbon 2 and the dextro enantiomer is undergoing the aromatic hydroxylation. So, from enantiomer to enantiomer, the pathways are different and this is we refer it as a product st uh, selectivity, stereoselectivity. Then drug biotransformation often lead to a creation of new asymmetric center. We know what is asymmetric center or we refer it as a stereo center. So, the carbon atom when attached to four different groups, we refer it as a asymmetric carbon or asymmetric center and that will lead to mainly the chiral molecule. The chirality will be present in the molecule and this we refer it as a stereoisomeric or enantiomeric product. So, formation of stereoisomeric product, we refer it as a product stereoselectivity. For example, the preferential formation of S enantiomer of hydroxyhexamide from the hypoglycemic agent acetohexamide. So, in this case, when the acetohexamide is getting metabolized, it is preferably forming the S enantiomer, not the R enantiomer. So, this is an example of product stereoselectivity. Then other example we can take the oxidative biotransformation which also lead to the product selectivity. So, one such example is the phenytoin. So, this phenytoin you can make out here. So, this phenytoin has two phenyl rings. One ring you can make out is coming above the plane and one ring is going below the plane okay, which is indicated by these lines dotted lines and thick lines and you can see here it is forming the two enantiomers. You can make out there is a chiral carbon here, chiral center is there, this is a uh, chiral molecule and because of that it will have the two enantiomers, the S enantiomer and R enantiomer. Now, when phenytoin is getting metabolized, it will form the two enantiomeric metabolite, S enantiomer metabolite and R enantiomer metabolite. But as compared to the R, the S enantiomer, amount of S enantiomer which is getting formed by the biotransformation pathway is more. So, this is the example of aromatic hydroxylation. Now, in this case, aromatic hydroxylation is happening at this ring, the S enantiomer will form. If, is, if it is happening at this ring, the R enantiomer is getting formed. But you can make out the amount of R is just 10 percent and the amount of S is 90 percent. That means, the metabolic pathway is favoring, is preferring the S enantiomer. 90 percent S enantiomer is formed and this we refer it as a product stereoselectivity. Okay. So, this is the product stereoselectivity. We will take another example of the popular drug dizepam and desmethyl dizepam. Okay. So, there is a minor difference in dizepam this R is methyl and in case of desmethyl dizepam, the methyl group is absent, it is replaced by the hydrogen. Now, here this dizepam or desmethyl dizepam is going the biotransformation pathway at this carbon 3 position and you can make out here, it preferentially form the S enantiomer of these corresponding drugs, dizepam and desmethyl dizepam will biotransform preferably into the S enantiomer that is 3SN methyl oxazepam and S plus oxazepam. So, this is favoring the S enantiomer over the R enantiomer. So, this is again an example of product stereoselectivity. Now, 
some of the bar transformations are regio selective. So, what is regio selective? That means they will give the preference to the chemical bonding or breaking in one direction or all other possible directions. So, one such example we can take that is O demethylation of papaverine. Now, you can see in this structure of papaverine, there are four methoxy groups. One here at 6th position, another here at 7th position, then third at 3 dash position and the fourth at this 4 dash position. So, this O demethylation, we have seen this reaction. So, there is a possibility that the O demethylation can happen at all these four. But in rats, guinea pigs, rabbits and dogs, they are preferably happening at the fourth dash position of this particular structure. So, what, what it is doing? It is giving a preference to the four dash methoxy group over the other three methoxy group. That means, this particular biotransformation pathway is regio selective. We refer it as a regio selective. It is preferring over all other possible groups which can also undergo biotransformation, but it is preferring at a particular group. We refer it as a regio selective drug metabolism. So, this is all about the various factors affecting the rate of drug metabolism. I hope you have understood this. We will see in the next video with the other topics. Thank you.